Hey, g'day, it's uh, Preso here, and this is episode 9 of the Stuart number 8 mill engine build. In this episode, I'm going to try and correct the awful mistake I made with this connecting rod, which was originally a one piece bronze casting. I just through lack of care and checking the drawings, I ended up screwing up this end of the connecting rod, which should have had more material and been rectangular and cross section at this point. What I've done is I drew the part on my 3D CAD package so I could get a, a 3D view of the part and that just allows me to get my head around uh, working out the machining processes that I need to do to carry out this part. The part itself is going to have a separate steel plate which will bolt uh, onto these two bronze bearing halves which is more like the traditional way of making these connecting rods. Uh, they would never have been made of a fully bronze casting, it's just not strong enough and doesn't have the characteristics you need for that part. So I'm going to use a fairly hefty chunk of steel, which I'll show you in a minute, and I'm going to take care of all of this end of the connecting rod first. So I'll get the, um, this profile machined out on the mill, I'll machine the slot, uh, drill the through hole, uh, and I'll make a block of steel to fit into that yoke which will carry a center. That's going to allow me to support that end while I machine this really narrow tapered section of the rod and the lower end uh, which bolts onto the, the bronze uh, bearing halves will be initially with a large circular uh, plate and it'll be later on profiled to, to match the, the bearing halves. So the material that I've got to do this is some free cutting steel. I know it looks like a big chunk of steel and it is, but it's the only piece that I have which is uh, free cutting. I do have other cold roll steel but it doesn't machine very well. So this roughly half of it is just going to be uh, allowing me to grip this in a, a vise or a chuck while I do all of the machining operations on one end. So yep, I'm Roughly half of this is going to be cut off later on. So we're going to head over to the lathe and we'll start by getting uh, all of this end profiled or at least down to the correct diameter and then it's off to the milling machine to do all of the, uh, the profile of that end. Okay, so what I did with that big chunk of steel was I machined one end down to around about 25 millimeters, which will fit through my collet block and that's going to allow me to index around to do most of the machining operations at the top end or the yoke end of the connecting rod. So this area here that's in the chuck at the moment is mainly going to be held in a collet or in a vise and the connecting rod itself is going to come out of this material here. Okay, so the yoke end will fit into this area here. I might machine away a bit more of this material just in case when I do it on the CNC mill I want to run past that area with the tool. So I'll just clear some of this stock. Okay, so the plan here is that I have to be able to machine two flats on the end of this stock. So I'm using the collet block so I can just simply accurately index this for each operation. So once I've set the material in here, I'm thinking that I'm not going to move it. So I'll just leave enough protruding there to be able to do what I need to do. So what I'll do is I'll machine the top off, invert the collet block and then machine the other side. At least that way the two cuts are going to be symmetrical about the center line. If I try and machine the back face and then the front face if I'm not careful I could end up getting this sort of offset either in front or behind the center line so as much as I don't want to remove the collet block and reset it it's all supposed to be precision ground so it should work out okay so I'm going to Turn the block over, do the same cut the other side, and I'll use the DRO then to get to my finished size. So 
So what I need to do next is to cut a quarter inch slot through the center of this stock. Uh, and it's a fairly deep cut and this piece doesn't need to be that diameter there. I'm going to reduce this down to the diameter shown for the eye which is uh, 11 30 seconds. So I'll take enough stock off the top and bottom to give me 11 30 seconds which will allow me to get the, the correct radius on the end of the eye. Then I'll cut the quarter inch slot. So that'll do, I cut the quarter inch slot through the center of that and then we're on to the CNC to cut the profile of the eye. Okay, well that's centered on the stock now so we'll change our quarter inch cutter and we'll cut our slot. Uh, it's going to get boring, so we'll come back when I'm done. I ran out of travel on my uh, collar block here. The two collar parts we're going to touch, so I just increased the stick out on the cutter, which is getting a bit too much for my liking, but I've only got a little tiny bit to go. I just I put the slot all the way through, uh, say for about three millimeters at the end. Alright, well that's pretty much sure that's all the way through, but if it's not it doesn't matter because we're going to profile all of this anyway. So from here we're going over to the CNC mill and I'll program a tool path to give us that profile. So I've marked this out with the digital height gauge and I've sent a punch what will be the centre of the eye and I've set up my zero point for my datum on that point. So I can go ahead and drill this. Uh, it's 532nd on one side and tapped 5BA on the other. And then all of the profiling will be done around that central point. Well, it's about an hour since I drilled those holes and tapped the 5BA thread there. I mounted up my ER40 chuck and put a 4mm solid carbide end mill in there and sort of ran the code dry and then realised I was going to have exactly the same problem I had on the manual mill and that is the, the collet uh, nut was going to clash before it had cut all the way through. So. Um, <clears throat> I had no choice but to extend the stick out on that part and that meant having to realign uh, all of my surfaces uh, and I had to reset the X uh, which I absolutely didn't want to do because even though I was really careful and uh, double checked there's still no guarantee that these holes going to line up with uh, the Z axis so as you can imagine, I wasn't a very happy camper, but um, sort of had no choice. So I, I put the medium-sized collet chuck in there, uh, which is going to give me enough clearance. So um, we're only doing 0.75 of a millimeter depth of cut each time. And uh, I think I've explained before that this is not a rigid setup, not a rigid mill in any way at all. So I'm always very conservative with my feed rates and cut depths. So um, let's give it a whirl and see what happens.
Well, apart from screwing up the shot, <laughs> I didn't realise that um, the chuck was in the way. But that turned out better than I thought. So the surface on that's pretty clean. Everything looks central at this end. Yep, that's okay. I'll clean that up, deburr it, and it's back on the lathe. Well, I've got this uh, profile done here and I've given that a bit of a clean up and removed the burrs. What I have made is a sort of a, I don't know what you call that, it's like a a piece that goes between the two sides of the yoke and I can put in a, a shouldered screw that I made. This wasn't uh, in the kit. It's a 532nd shank uh, bolt with a 5VA thread on the end and it's been sized so that um, the shoulder pulls up just short of the other side of the yoke there. And with that I can clamp that Make sure it's sort of snugged up tight between the two sides of the yoke, and then I can use that to drill my center drill hole. So that's quite firm. So I'm going to center drill this now, and this is going to give me something to support this end while I turn this tapered section. So what I can do now is to move the whole job out of the chuck. and support that free end. Okay, so I feel a bit happier knowing that this end is supported. It's got a lot of turning to do in here, a lot of stock to come off. And the last thing I want to do is bend this delicate section up here. So I'm just going to rough it out first, um, try and get it sort of parallel at the correct dimension it should be at this end of the connecting rod. pretty close to the correct dimension for the flange that fits over the split bronze bearing half. So what I need to do now is work out the exact length of this connecting rod and mark that uh, with a parting off uh, cut. Bit of chatter. This looks like knurling. Anyway, that's given me a mark, so I'll work out where this other one goes. Alright, that's my other one. So this section here is going to be the flat flange that fits up against the top of the two split bronze bearings. So whatever's left between here and here, I can now machine tape it. if you notice but the uh, the chips that were coming off on that last cut were coming off sort of uh, a bit ropey which means that this section is starting to whip backwards and forwards a bit it's sort of losing all its strength so I'm going to take much lighter cuts now and then at some point I'm going to have to sort of blend and, and get all its profile at the top
All right, let's put that diameter at this end at 930 seconds, which is what I need. All of this has to be cleaned up, and I'm just going to do a bit of freehanding at the top here. Well, that's sort of like the shape that I want there, but uh, we're still about 50 thou oversize at the neck here. Um, I'm going to turn this section down to its correct dimension and then try and blend the taper in later. Okay, so that's later on that's going to be cut to a profile to match the bearing. So that's going to sort of be rectangular with a three quarter inch radius on the outer edge. So uh, I'm going to set up to do the taper, I think it's about 0.86 of a degree. Yes, I just tapped the compound slide around to just less than a degree and it seems to have worked out okay. Finish on that's not brilliant but um, I've got a, a long angle lathe file that will clean that up quite nicely and just use a bit of emery. This top end here is, um, I've got a radius turning attachment which I'm going to break out and see if I can get that to get that profile correct there because I could use a form tool, but I know what's going to happen. It's just going to twist and chatter. This end, maybe I can use a form tool there. It's a bit more rigid. Okay, well, this is the tool I'm planning to use to put the radius on the end of the connecting rod fork. This um, tool is set up for doing concave radii. Uh, the tool itself, there's almost nothing of the tool protruding from this spindle here. It's probably only a millimetre or a millimetre and a half, but I want this radius to be as small as I can get it. And I think that's 12 millimetres minim minimum on that spindle. So <clears throat> I'm going to set this up on the tool post and I'll try and put the camera in a position where you can see what I'm doing. But the advantage of doing this is that basically we're using a single point cutting tool to do the, the cutting which is a lot more gentle on the, the workpiece than using a form tool which uh, has a much wider cutting edge. This cutting edge on this is going to be tiny. So it's not going to put too much stress on the part as it rotates. And I'll try and keep my hands out of the way but hopefully you can see the, the process that we're going to use here. So I'm going to set the tool up, I'll just go off camera for a minute, I'll set this up and then we'll come back and watch the cutting. Okay, so a little bit of a transition between the taper and the, the tangent there, but um, I'll just blend that with a file. Okay, well, just off camera there, I just cleaned all that up. I used um, emery cloth and so I got this bit of red rag underneath trying to protect the bed from the abrasive. In this uh, junction between the taper and the the flat section I used one of those horrible brazed carbide tools uh, just simply had the correct radius on the end of it. So what I need to do now is just part this off and hopefully I don't smash it all up doing this last operation. So I'm going to go really slowly and carefully. Use plenty of coolant and just keep the tailstock in position until we're nearly through.
Okay. So, just need to file away that little broken piece in the center there, and then I've got to match match that shape to the bottom end of the connecting rod and drill the, the holes. And then we should be good. Well, this is just some of the paraphernalia I needed to be able to assemble the lower half of the connecting rod to the steel section I made. My problem was that the alignment between the two ends of the connecting rod has to be perfect. So uh, it wasn't just a simple matter of clamping them together and drilling some holes. I had to be able to ensure that the bearing section here was accurately aligned with the oak at the top. I also had to ensure that this radius on the edge of the bronze bearing section matched up perfectly with the steel turn section for the part of the connecting rod I made in the lathe. And the only way I could think of doing that was to make a sort of a, an alignment ring. So this aluminium ring has been machined at the correct diameter and it allowed me to align the bronze bearing parts with this steel disc here. So I just popped the, the bearing in, uh, clamped it in place and did a lot of checking and backwards and forwards with different gauge blocks and whatnot until I was satisfied that I had the alignment right. Uh, when I had that, I was able to clamp that down, drill or spot through this hole and then fit one of the bolts. Uh, then using once again a series of one, two, three blocks and height gauge and whatnot, I was able to um, spot through the second hole and drill that. I also had to make some special bolts. Uh, these got a very small hex head on them. Made these nuts as well and that was just simply so they would fit into the counterbores that I've already made. Uh, the nuts and the studs and bolts and so on that were supplied were way too big and just seemed to be over scale. So the remaining thing now is to machine off this protruding section here on both sides and I think I'm going to just simply scribe that onto the end of that disc. So <clears throat> I'm just going to run the scriber along there. I've already blued that end and then I'll rough cut that and probably finish the rest on the lathe. Okay, so what I'm planning to do here is I've made a, a threaded mandrel um, and what I'm going to do is just bolt the bearing onto that. I've machined that stub so that it's a slightly snug fit on the bore of the, the bearing. So when I tighten these nuts up, everything will align. And then even though that grips firmly, I'm going to use a 6mm cap screw just to snug everything down and make sure that nothing moves when I do this last facing operation. So that's firmish, but I wouldn't rely on it. So the cap screw is just going to ensure that nothing moves. Alrighty, so that's quite firm. So what I've got to do now is just very, very carefully machine down the remaining steel that I didn't remove at the grinding process. Okay, well, I've just swapped out the tool that at least gives me a bit more clearance. And I've set a few zeros on my uh, cross slide collar and compound slide collar just so I know where to stop. Okay, wish me luck. So, I don't know if you can see, but I've come a bit too far up this tapered section here, so that was sort of, that was the look that I was trying to get though, I was trying to get this sort of a, a radius in here, um, but unfortunately came a bit too far up, I'll just blend that with a file. So, that 
takes care of that side. I'll do the other side, but it's just more of the same, so you don't want to watch that. We'll come back when I complete finish. We'll have a look. This is the bronze casting that's supplied for the crosshead. It has an extra long spigot on this end. Uh, I'm guessing this is to allow you to grip that part and then machine this diameter that fits inside the trunk guide. I'm struggling to think of a way of doing this so that it can remain accurate. I have a forge or chuck set up here so I can grip the part and machine the spigot. I can also face it off, drill it, tap it for the piston rod. This spigot's actually too long so it'll need to be shortened later. But while it's that length I can reverse it in the chuck and do all the work on this end as well. I also need to be able to mill a slot on both sides of this uh, to accept the end of the connecting rod. And it's got to be cross drilled for the connecting rod as well. So like any of these situations uh, there's multiple ways of removing the epidermis from a feline. The way I do it is probably not the way uh, was intended to be done but it's a method that's going to suit the equipment that I have and I've only got a small brain and I have to think about a way that suits me as well. Okay, well I've swapped out my drill, tapping size drill for a 4VA tap. I'm going to tap this now. Remember this spigot here is way too long. But if I get the thread started, and then later on when I need to shorten this, I've already got the thread begun in that hole. And I can extend that through to its full depth. So I did a bit of maths and I worked out how far I needed to drill worked out to be about 19 millimeters and this being bronze uh, it's tapping really nicely okay you feel like sort of wanting to bottom out in that hole so I'm going to leave that now I need to flip this around and start machining this outer diameter to fit the trunk guide That looked undersized. No, it wasn't. That's 19.06. So let me just get the trunk guide and we'll try that. All right. That's that's how I want it. That's probably tight-ish. But I can lap that in or just slightly increase the diameter of that bore in the trunk guide. So, yep, yeah, that's good. Okay, so there's the end of the crosshead machine. That's the correct length now, 76 thou, under, or under what I started with. And the next step is to go to the milling machine and machine this slot. So I put the bronze casting into a collet block that's mounted in the vise on the milling machine. I have to reduce the overall thickness of this part. At some point I need to machine the slot as well. Alright, so that's cleaned up that surface there, so what I'll do is turn the collar block over and do the other side, and then I'll get a measurement on it. Okay, uh, I wasn't concentrating there when I started up, I just tapped that with the, the edge of the cutter, but got away with it.
Well, let's uh, just took one millimeter off that side. I'll do the other side. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's 11.12, 7 sixteenths plus half a pound. So, what I need to do now is middle this slot. Um, that sort of got me worried, but I have got a reference surface underneath here which I can put on a parallel uh, and I can set up in the vise squeezing between this end and the other end. Uh, it's only a light cut, half inch wide slot and uh, I, I can check the depth as I go. Okay, I'm not sure if this is the right way to do it, but I've put the part in the device on the milling machine. It's sitting on a parallel on that previously machined surface. I've got a small piece of copper at this end just to protect that end where I've already uh, tapped for the piston rod. Uh, I'm going to use my edge finder to locate the exact center of that diameter. So the closest I have is a 15 30 second, uh, and the slot needs to be half an inch wide. So I'll take a pass through the center. I can set my depth off this reference surface here. So I only have to make one turn of the part in the vise. Alright, so I'll deburr that, flip it over. Okay, so next step is to take care of this end and there's a bit of shaping down here and I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. Grind up a special tool here to finish off this end of the crosshead. It's shaped a bit like a trepanning tool, about three millimeters wide. It's going to allow me to undercut that end of the, the crosshead where the piston rod screws in. Remember, this is mainly decorative. It's, uh, I don't see that it serves any real purpose at all. So the last operation you need to carry out on this crosshead is this little radius at what will be the bottom of the crosshead and I'm guessing that's to allow the connecting rod to pivot on its pin without fouling on any part of that crosshead. So I thought about just hand filing that, um, I thought about CNC machining it. Then I remembered I had this little gadget which is a George Thomas rotary table. Now it is hand rotated, there's no uh, gear drive for this 
and there are a pair of stops uh, which stop you from going too far in either direction. So I'm going to use a small uh, end mill or a slot drill, not sure yet, and um, I'm just going to take this in very small bites and I'm relying just on the um, stops to prevent this from digging in and breaking the cut or breaking the part. It's a, a little bit fiddly to set up. I had to make a pair of um, finger clamps to hold this down. There's a 532nd pin in the centre to locate it and I've used a, um, a centre finder to position directly over that 532nd pin. And because of the, the slot underneath here I've got no problems about digging into the, the top of the rotary table. I just did a bit of a trial run there just to make sure they have no clearances at either end correct and the cutter has to be offset from this end surface here by 1 16th of an inch which I've set up. I had to go away and cut these bolts off, they were too long and they were going to hit on the, the bottom of the collet chuck so so we're going to be basically doing conventional milling so I'm going to start on this corner, work my way across this one, come back, feed in the cutter and so on. It's broken through the other side there. Oh, that's not bad, looks pretty neat. So I just need to deburr that now. And not real sure about this radius at the end on the drawing it shows a almost zero radius, so I'm not sure how you meant to do that. Well, that takes care of the connecting rod, all three parts of it, and the crosshead. So these parts are still a little bit stiff, they're going to need to be run in, but they're ready to go into the engine. I did eventually blend that little damaged area on the rod and I checked the fit of all the parts and it's all looking good. So that's the end of this episode. In the next one we're going to probably finish all of the parts and then after that it's just a matter of assembly. So uh, if you've been following along Thanks for doing that and thanks for watching. Oh, and how do you throw a rod? Like this.